Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we've been given a lovely panel right before lunch. So we'll try and wrap it up fast. So none of you blame us for keeping you hungry. Uh, but thanks to Business World for uh, picking this topic up. I think this is something that has uh, really caught all the competition lawyers and general counsels across the country uh, in a lot of debate and discussion. What is this DCA? What is the digital competition law? And, and for us competition lawyers, it's, uh, you know, back in college when you ever studied competition law, uh, the 101 was being big is not bad. It's, it's just you can't abuse that bigness. Now that seems to be inverting and not just in India, but across the globe. And the digital competition bill that has come out uh, is a reflection of that significant change, a very dramatic shift uh, that we are seeing in how competition laws are understood and are applied. And that, of course, means that for general counsels across the country, there's going to be a big challenge on, on suddenly changing the way compliance is approached internally, uh, especially, you know, when business comes to you with new proposals and designs, there will be an element of uh, how much of it is permitted under the digital competition law. And we use the word digital competition law, and I'll, I'll, I have a brilliant panel today of uh, three people who've been helping companies for a long part of their careers in designing uh, compliance measures. So I would love to talk this with them, but I think all three of them have also seen a fundamental shift of how technology is increasingly becoming important. And it's not just the technology companies, but it's becoming important for literally every organization. So what will the interface of this digital competition law be with all of these companies is something we hope to explore today. And, and let me start with uh, Rajvi, sir. Uh, so what do you think are the most critical aspects of this bill for you? Thank you uh, for uh, starting the conversation. This draft competition, uh, you know, the law bill introduced this year in March 2024, it's an ex ante uh, regulation applicable to systematically significant digital enterprises, so-called SSTs, who are providing the core digital services and those core digital services are covered under the Schedule 1 of the DCB where nine CDs, uh, core digital services have been listed. So if I, if I may go through those nine core digital services, it includes online search engines, like you have Google and Bing, online social networking services, which is Facebook, Instagram, video sharing platform services like YouTube, interpersonal communication services, WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger, we, we use it every day, operating systems like iOS or Android, web browsers, cloud services, advertising services, and online intermediation services. The list of these core digital services is inclusive, but it can be modified by the central government in consultation with CCI. Now, how do we identify the SSDE? There's a criteria prescribed under the DCB bill, and uh, those identification of SSD is done through two methodologies. One is quantitative threshold, another is qualitative threshold. In the quantitative threshold, they have two tests, significant financial strength and significant spread test. So I'll, I'll just touch upon this part of the significant financial strength test, which says if an entity has a Indian turnover of INR 4,000 crores or a global turnover of USD 30 billion, gross merchandise value of INR 16,000 crores or global market capitalization of USD 75 billion, then those entities will be deemed to be SSTEs. And if there is a significant spread test applied, which means the end users are one crore in India, end users one crore in India, and business users 10,000 users in India, this will qualify to be SSDE. Apart from this, under the bill, they have introduced a qualitative threshold criteria where entity, even if it does not meet the uh, uh, quantitative threshold criteria, but has significant presence in respect of core digital services provided by them, the, uh, it can be notified as a uh, SSDE. Uh, the, uh, and that depends upon the volume, commerce of enterprise, size and resources, economic power of the entity, 
number of business users and users, and net worth effects. Some of the obligations which SSD has, one is the self-reporting obligation, which means the enterprise has to notify CCI within 90 days of meeting the threshold that it is a qualified SSD, and failure to notify has certain penalty provisions under the, under the bill, and uh, therefore it's a self-reporting obligation on the SSDs, moment you come under the threshold, you have to notify and declare yourself SSDE. Then there are anti-competitive conducts which have been listed. One is self-preferencing, which means SSD shall not directly or indirectly favor its products, services, lines of business, etc. Data usage, and data usage where SSD shall not use non-public data of business users to compete with such business users. And one of the classic examples, I will not name the companies, CCI in, their prim in its prima facie order, uh, they found that uh, some of the companies, they use data collected from restaurants, listed in their platform to compete with such platforms by setting up their own cloud kitchens. And that was something where debate went on. Second uh, uh, category comes restricted third party apps. SSD, they are not allowed, they are, they, 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 SSD shall not restrict the ability of end users, business users to download, install, use third party applications. Other aspect, anti-steering, SSD shall not restrict business users from directly or indirectly promoting offers to their end users or directly directing their end users to their own or third party services. Take Google case, CCI found Google prohibited app developers from directing the users towards third party payment processors. Then the tying and bundling, bundling, SSD shall not require to incentivize business users, end users of identified uh, core digital services to use additional products or services of SSD. For example, in Google Android case, CCI found that Google offers its apps such as Google Search, Maps, and OEM cannot choose another individual apps. So I think looking at these nuances, this court, uh, you know, the, 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 the digital competition bill has been introduced and, and we'll see how it will have to be interpreted as, as we go along and, and, and see how, 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 uh, uh, how the, the different organizations, conglomerated, who are providing the uh, services will be impacted by this uh, bill, which will come into a legislation very soon. Thank you so much, sir. The very comprehensive overview of the bill. And I think from there, picking up on a few key points, uh, you have, of course, something similar to what under the competition law right now is known as dominance. So you have a different word for it, but it largely seems to be similar to dominance. Now we have the SSDEs. And uh, from how, sir, so explain the obligations under the bill with, uh, you know, references to how the CCI is dealing with them. One other aspect that comes out is that these are not areas uncovered by the current law, right? It's, it's all covered by the current law. So, Mukul, if I could bring you in to probably discuss what is the goal that uh, the government is trying to achieve with the introduction of this bill, especially when it looks like all of this is already dealt with. So why a new law? Fantastic, Diksha. Uh, first up, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you, BW Legal World, uh, and to make me part of this fantastic panel. A very interesting question uh, Diksha has asked, that why? Why more laws? And mind you that there already is uh, a draft competition amendment bill. So there is an amendment to competition law uh, itself, whereby the real uh, threshold value is, is, is coming in and the other, other changes. So uh, why a new uh, DCL, why a new digital competition law when the basic premises can be covered under section four of, of the Competition Act and as Disha, as Disha started with, that being big is not a problem. If you abuse your bigness, that is the problem. So even if you have big tech, if you have Amazons and the Facebook of the world, that is not an issue. Issue is when you start, pro start using that, uh, that, that position uh, to create anti-competitive uh, practices in the market. Now, having said that, let's just come to specifics as to why it was required. So one of the reasons what CDCL, uh, that is the committee on the DCL, has put forth, and which is what even the government has said, that the digital markets are different. Uh, they are very different from, from the brick and mortar market that we live in and what the competition act primarily deals with. 
and even if you see the European Union EU has come with a digital market act and maybe we have modeled our competition act also in 2002 uh, based on what were the practices in EU and UK and likewise we are now modeling our digital competition law also on mostly on what are the practices in uh, is covered under the EU law of digital market act. Even US and UK also have started uh, to have the digital uh, market or, or similar, similar, similar legislations. Now, uh, coming to the specific as to why the DCL is required. Now, I'll just take a cue from what uh, Mr. Sasdeva has pointed out, the Google example. Google, uh, um, uh, just and all these things are in public domain, Google has uh, a policy called UCB, whereby they said that if you will have any billing payment system, which is other than what Google is giving, then you have to pay some higher percentages. Then you have to give or share 11% to 26% of the revenue with Google. This is what they started with. Now, so they are the big platform, they are the gatekeepers, and therefore every user who wants to use uh, their services has to get the bill done either by their platform or if they're using some other billing services, they have to shell out a huge chunk of revenue. Now, these people, they went to CCI for an interim relief. CCI is investigating Google under Section 4 because right now DCL is not law. The only law right now is the Competition Act. So Section 4, they are investigating. But then they said there's no interim relief because we cannot give you. What is, what is the harm we'll see? So all these entities like Shadi.com and Cuckoo FM, et cetera, et cetera, they are now hardened. Why? Because even if later uh, it is found out that Google's practices were abuse of dominance, there may be some fine imposed on Google, but then they are hardened with. So even if it is taking six months, one year, one, one and a half years time, so they are, whatever a billing cycle is, whatever payment is, they are now hardened with that. And there is no law right now which caters to that kind of uh, scenario. And therefore, I feel that D DCL is, is a right law. Uh, it may be, uh, it might have come a bit later, but then again, it is, it is in a step in the right direction. Now, there can be, there can be arguments whether DCL can be uh, made a separate act or it can just be an amendment to competition law. That is, that doesn't make much of a difference. Now, but, but there are a few aspects we are like to bring in into this DCL, which is there right now, the critical aspect. As Mr. Sisdeva has rightly said that SSDE. So, DCL talks about SSDEs. Now, that is where a big problem arises in this current legislation, the bill that is there. Now, SSD has a dual uh, qualification or a twin qualification, section 3, subsection 2. One is, as uh, Mr. Sasdeva pointed out, is the 4,000 crore revenue mark and 1 crore business users. Prem FSA looks like that's a decent number. But, but just let's see the data a little bit. Fintech industry in the country, there are almost 7,000 fintech startups. Now, uh, there is uh, a study which says the fintech market can be easily a market of one trillion dollar in by 2020 by 2030. Now you see 4,000 crore, which is just 550 million USD, with a V one trillion dollar is just 0 0.5 out of 1,000. Likewise, one crore users, mind you, they are end users as defined in the act. Now, I can be on WhatsApp, I can be on Snapchat, I can be on uh, Telegram, I can be on some Instagram messenger. I'm a single user, but there are four end users. I'm a single person, but then four end users. So if 140 crore is in India's population and they're using WhatsApp, Snapchat, Instagram, etc., this means it is 230 crore, 240 crore of end users. So just one crore after 230. So you see the percentage, 0 0.5 out of 1,000, 1 out of 230, and you are an SSDE. As a fintech player, as an IT, 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 IT company, the moment you come, you are 0.5 of 1,000 and 1 of 230, you are an SSDE and you are competing with the Googles and the Amazons of the world in compliance. How difficult it will be for those players. Is this the right startup ecosystem that we want? So that we have to really deliberate and think about. It looks like that 4,000 crore is a huge number. It looks like that 1, 000, uh, 1 crore business users or end users is a big number or 10,000 business users is a big number, but they may not be that big. And that is why the market study should have been done more empirically looking at the Indian uh, scenario, which is growing day by day. We are not Europe, which is stagnant or is not growing that fast. So that is one piece which I feel uh, has gone amiss. And the second piece is the definitions are extremely broad, extremely inclusive. Uh, as Mr. Sasdeva said, there are nine items in CDS, Core Digital Service. First of all, CDS itself is an inclusive definition, whether they are nine or 19, nobody knows in coming times. And each and every of those nine items are inclusive. Now, what does it mean? This means they can, it's an, a bureaucrat, an executive body can interpret it in whatever manner it, it wants to. One thing which is missing right now in that nine list is generative AI 
or the AI per se. But then again, you can say it's an inclusive definition, you can include as intermediation service, and you can say AI also is covered. So that is a very big problem, I feel, say, with the, with the, with the bill right now, and it requires more modification and more, uh, more nuanced uh, approach to it. Uh, the bill is slated to be presented in the monsoon session, but I see that some more work is, to be, is required to be done on this bill. Thank you so much, Mukul. I think I couldn't agree more with some of the points that you made, especially around the lack of clarity of the scope of the bill. But I think two points that uh, sort of emerged and uh, they strongly uh, made an impact on me was one, uh, one of the primary reasons, uh, as you highlighted, for the bill to be brought in is uh, the speed of investigations under competition law generally. And there, what we've seen with the European experience is that this is hardly a law which is self-executing. Uh, you've now inverted sort of the, uh, the manner of assessment uh, to say that, okay, I, I will not examine your conduct when you do something wrong, but do no wrong. And if you do that wrong, based on your self-declaration, I'll come behind you. And, and it seems at least from the way things have been going on Europe where, you know, these, these big tech companies and all of them filed their compliance report and European Commission said, we are investigating, that the benefit of speed may not really be there. But equally, as you rightly pointed out, this is going to be fairly expansive in its scope and largely unclear with a lot left on how the CCI defines the regulations of who are the companies covered, what is the conduct allowed, not allowed, all of it along with a very significant penalty. So Pulin sir, if you could just uh, give us a little bit of an overview of how you think the industry is going to react to something like this because we are now very fundamentally changing the way in which a lot of companies are used to operating where earlier scrutiny would be based on bad action but now it's all seem to be moving uh, more to a self-regulated compliance territory where if you fail, I'll, I'll come and chastise you immediately. Uh, thank you, Diksha, and thank you, Business World, for having me here. Um, see, from industry perspective, if I look at from the lenses of industry, there has been enough regulations and there are regulations coming in again and again. So whenever, as a, as a you know, in-house counsel, we go to the board and apprise that there is a new law. But the first reaction comes in that, you know, it's a highly regulated country. But we have to supplement that, you know, by taking a kind of scape that, yes, it is highly regulated country. At the same time, overburdened, overstressed regulator as well. So <laughs> we have to really uh, make a balance between the two. But all said and done, I mean, if I look at from a broader perspective, the law which has been proposed now, which is at the bill stage, it's a paradigm shift. So far, we have been looking at only the self-regulated codes, some policies which probably did not have or doesn't, do not have the punitive provisions. But here, the code is being converted into a huge and enormous punitive provision. So therefore, we are visualizing on an ecosystem which puts the owners on the enterprise to be regulated, else be exposed to the huge punitive uh, provisions. I mean, uh, we are really, I mean, looking at, a, looking at an era where we can simply say that it is going to be a Ram Rajya again. So that's how we are looking at. If everybody starts self-regulating so uh, strictly and diligently, then probably we can you know, do away with the competition law which is in force today. But ha having said that, law is going to come. I mean, still it is in the consultation stage. There are a lot of, lot of uh, suggestions and input would, would definitely come from all the stakeholders. And there would be some justification as the concerns have been raised by my esteemed co-panelists in their discourse. Things would shape up nicely, that is what the expectation is, but they look at from the industry perspective, I mean, who is going to be the significant I mean, the, uh, you know, uh, the system, systemic, systemically significant digital enterprise, SSDE. 
and what are the other areas what are the other companies which are not competing with the threshold you know meeting the threshold criteria i mean is it going to be applicable to all the organization all the companies which are into the digital space no there are some threshold but if we look at from the equality perspective probably this is being you know bifurcated and this is being you know preferences or given to the lower segment of the industry but are they really going to celebrate i don't think that they are going to celebrate as of now because they are out of the threshold so therefore when you become inside of the threshold and you become regulated that becomes a questionable uh, you know uh, uh, proposition so therefore i would really summarize and pause here for the uh, you know uh, other esteemed uh, panelists to chip in that we have to see uh, how it is going to create a balance between the you know um, innovation and and fair play so that is the question has to be seen how fairly it is going to be implemented and how fairly it is going to do justice that has to be seen another law another court with huge punitive provisions that's okay we are there to you know really um, support that uh, uh, law which is going to come but the question is that you know we have seen the uh, resistance if you have uh, if uh, i mean we have noticed recently in an argument uh before the delhi high court in a, a major um, social media uh, uh, service provider that they have gone to the making a statement in the court that this it was related to some encryption and de encryption kind of thing and it has gone to the make statement in the uh, court that they are ready to in fact withdraw the service from india but would that be the ideal situation because we are so much into the technical uh aspect the technological advancement we are talking about ai we are talking about what not you know and 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 uh, kind of uh, uh, internet space which is helping the entire ecosystem are we going to afford that kinds of l loss to the uh, ecosystem so certainly not but yet the law has to see and the i am sure that the consultation and the law makers would take care of the things which have the equitable kind of control and self regulation impose self regulation where uh, the industry is also uh, able to support that regulation so i'll pause here uh, diksha and hand it over to you to take this forward thank you so much sir i think uh, one very important element that you brought out is the need for balance in this law especially because it's dealing with tech space so it could anything that you do which is unwanted and not warranted could actually reduce innovation significantly and and of course the fact that uh, people who are excluded may not really have a reason to celebrate right because they might be part of those broader ecosystems and benefiting from some of the practices which might be restricted equally uh, as they grow there is a risk of them coming into coming into the fold of uh, this law uh, rajvi sir coming back to you uh, and and discussing this uh, a little more what do you think the impact is going to be especially when you try and uh, look at the impact in light of the goals that you think the law serves to or has been designed to serve you raised an issue why separate enactment and i think that was something which we started with the discussion mukul dwelled upon that uh, polin also mentioned about why separate enactment if you see the uh, the preface or the people who were involved in this law when all mrs palvi shirov anand patak and others uh, agreed khetan see when i went through the history the and the in the notes and they they said look section 4 and originally when you say section 4 under the competition act abuse of dominance it required delineation of relevant market and once you make an assessment about the delineation of relevant market you also have to take the assessment by taking into account factors enumerated in 194 that was something which was a tedious task onerous task and particularly the way the digital space was moving at a fast pace this separate enactment was brought in second under section 34 of the competition act it was to be seen and examined by ae appreciable adverse effect which i think they wanted to do away when this dcb uh, the law brought in or the bill brought in 
and uh, primarily the reason was i think the digital space was moving much f at a much faster pace than what was seen in the other uh, businesses or other segments so therefore competition act where we saw certain inquiries and investigations going for 12 years and 14 years and now all matters are in supreme court there was a necessity to bring this new legislation and this is what has been brought under the dcb i'll i'll list down i, I think there are uh, pros and cons the people of the google and flipkart they have been opposing it uh, uh, i know of the uh, there are others who said it's a welcome step and i i, I think I, I will go for the welcome step let me list down certain aspects where they said why this law is required let me just i i made some notes last night when diksha spoke to me and said you have to come in the pros and cons i said okay let's have a panel where some pros also be there but every time we also criticize and say the law is bad i think why this law was necessitated let me just list down those factors one of those was the companies who were providing the digital services they did not follow the platform neutrality we have seen the google case second use they were using data to gain control over the market very important aspect third search and ranking preferences fourth they were collating data to improve their own products fifth large digital enterprises in e-commerce sector provided reduced commissions or discounts and they provided favorable terms for preferred sellers so these were the i think the background notes because of which this dcb bill or the digital competition law bill has been brought in i think i i i i i am in favor of this particular legislation the way the and it is if you see the eu eu also has moved on the ex ante regulation the competition act was ex post regulation whereas dcb when we talk about its ex ante regulation which means you set the rules of the game moment you come within the threshold you have to it's a self notification you have to notify yourself as ssd and if you if you still do not notify there is a heavy penalty which will be uh, put on to you one interesting um, point comes to my mind uh, i take you back uh, some years back and um, just uh, point your attention towards the mrtp act if uh, many of us must have gone through and practiced in mrtp also there was a provision of restrictive trade practices rtp which had no penal provision as such only cease and desist order could have been passed against if anybody is uh, practicing restrictive trade practices in a way i think that it is reinventing the wheel again the restrictive rtp is coming in with huge penalties so that's how you know we see so it is not new we knew it it has gone but again it is coming back so it's a reinventing the wheel with the of course the punitive uh, provisions are uh, to be seen 10% of global different, different perspective 10% of global turnover. it's a powerful new wine in an old bottle something which is going to get you very very drunk if you have it right <laughs> okay but mukul uh, let me let me come to you on what do you think the impact is going to be because as you were discussing uh, these the uh, the core digital services are more in the nature of ecosystems right so there are multiple stakeholders involved and i think if you make changes increase obligations uh, that's likely to have impact across the board so this could have impact to probably mna activities or uh, smaller companies so how widespread do you think the impact is going to be fantastic question diksha and yes mna uh, space is also going to get impacted which is something which never get discussed when we discuss the dcl uh, but before that i'll just like to answer one small thing which mr saldeva has said it it really picked my interest uh, very interestingly he said that uh, there are multiple reasons like platform neutrality and uh, allowing one means we are using your own platform to enter into some other market etc etc and that is not covered under section 194 and therefore we need to have a dcl and that is what the cdcl said there is a committee on uh, digital competition law uh, but i and i was hearing somewhere actually uh, on some 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 channel uh, there was one person who said that regulatory inefficiencies cannot be the reason why you bring new laws so there are people who are who are that vocal about all such things uh, but just drawing uh, uh, so what about uh, what i want to say is that see if you see if you interpret section 194 also rightly uh, 
uh, it no way stops you from making interpreting these things because you are what you are doing is you are using your dominance in one particular area say in search engine as a gatekeeper and you are entering into other areas so it is basically covered in 194 provided you really interpret in uh, in, a, in a right fashion in in, in that in that broad fashion manner but then again having said that i agree uh, with my mr sasdeva that yes digital markets are different they are absolutely different from how the brick and mortar world is uh, and therefore you know, we need a different legislation maybe an ex ante legislation than an ex post facto so i do not know uh, there is no there is no dis disagreement there actually that just this law is is required maybe with little bit of tinkering now come back to the mna space here and that is where i feel uh, that when they are drafting this this entire legislation somehow i feel that they had this big people big tech people uh, their faces there the googles and amazons and they were drafting just looking at them and therefore they have just missed out on many many things as i said one thing a uh, lot, lot of startups are there 4000 crore turnover um, 1000 one crore uh, users anybody can can satisfy that uh, 4000 crore is not a big amount of money as i said it's just a 550 million dollars us dollars which is for an industry of 1 trillion dollar of fintech so it's not something which can easily be uh, taken care of now that is one second is uh, as you said about mna space now people are going to invest in these startups in india right all these big kkrs and the big names uh, big investors they are going to invest uh, into 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 these these startups and that is where again the problem of the uh, of, of the legislation drafting is that they define group and they say group means group as defined under competition act now competition act says that if you have a 26% stake in a company you have a 26% uh, right um, uh, to uh, to uh, means you can you can control 26% stake then you are a group entity of that entity now kkr which is a fund which is i don't know how many billion dollars fund it is if that fund invest in 26% in a startup company in india that company easily qualifies as, as an ssde now that small start because then it is a group turnover that you have to look into for defining that 4000 crore uh, that 30 billion dollar uh, for those turnovers uh, th for that criteria it is a group group Uh, number that you have to take, and one crore user, as I said, one crore users are very easy numbers. One crore is not a great number because see, one person can have multiple accounts, so you can easily have a one crore user in, a, in one or two years of your of your operations. Now you have equated them, you have burdened them with compliance uh, cost. as big as of googles and the amazons of the world now how far it is good and that is going to impact them and now this means no 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 startup is going to have a foreign investor a media investor which will have a 26% stake in their company so do, uh, do we really want that is what the intent of this legislation that is where i feel that they have to really relook into these things and try to make it amenable to what digital markets are in india and have to look all these things just don't look into the googles and the facebooks uh, have their faith in right something think about the entire market do some empirical study go understand what the realities are and either divide the ssd into two three different buckets if you want to like what sebi does at times that okay this is what lodi requirement first top 100 market cap companies then it will go for next uh, next uh, tranche with some other company something like that or whatever else because they are brilliant minds in government they are great people in that cdcl so maybe they have to think more about this just stop looking at into the big tech uh, players and write something think about the google the, the reality of the country realities of india which in 5 10 years is going to be a 10 trillion dollar economy irrespective uh, whatever the, the political scenario remains in the country the indian the indian people india uh, the story is going to continue as big as it can be actually and i am pretty bullish that in next 15 20 years we are going to be the, the number one players in the, in the in the world and therefore our legislation should be akin to the indian realities and not something just copy pasted some from somewhere and looking at some 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 people there that is what my thoughts are for the impact i think that's as you rightly said this is not something which we very frequently discuss uh, but there are a lot of unintended consequences that you could be dealing with uh, we are very different from europe we are not a european economy we are not european users either and there's a lot of merit in rethinking a lot about uh, the law this is the first time the draft has come out even though we've been talking about this since 2021 when mr jayant mehta's report came out but uh, uh there is as you rightly said and i think what the discussions on this panel have revealed there's a need for a careful consideration of the present bill uh, of course it's open for comments till 15th of may so not much time if any of you want to use this discussion to put it in uh, probably a lot of weekend work but i think it it really merits that kind of work because it could impact uh, a lot of people sitting in this room today as well Uh, I know we are running short of time, close to lunch hour as well. So I will just, if any of you had any closing comments, uh, would be happy to take that. Otherwise, I think we do have a little time, maybe for a question or two. 
but not much. Everybody is hungry is the message I get, but uh, if any of you had any closing, points, yeah. Yeah, closing comments. Yeah. So, so uh, Alice said that this is a law which is required as, as digital markets are different. Uh, maybe they can really work a little bit more onto this. And I really want that those players who are getting impacted thereby, the, the, the startup tech companies or the mid-tier tech companies, uh, they should definitely come out, look into this bill uh, and uh, put a, 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 their, their point across. And they can take help of um, uh, uh, great lawyers like Deeksha to draft uh, whatever they want to uh, uh, put across. Uh, just one, just a closing comment, just one small thing to this, uh, that uh, obviously then we have to see that how uh, CCI has to interpret this law and CCI is doing a great job uh, obviously in the past few years despite being very uh, constrained with resources etc. So one is I feel that there should be more uh, industry representation in such regulatory bodies. Maybe they have to think about those things and the current government has come out with um, joint secretary positions and etc. some time back. Maybe that kind of industry connect has to be much much more and maybe th if regulators can have people from industry, from law firms, from, 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 from GCs and, and other, other, other industry players economist and industry, maybe for a short stint, say two years, three years, maybe that will help our regulators also to grow and be aligned with industry. So maybe that is one where we can think of uh, going forward and that will have the connect between regulators and the, and the regulated entities much, much better. That's what I feel. We're having uh, some agencies which are working under the AGs of various ministries and they are having a big, big consultative approach from the corporates also and we have been part like we have Invest India for that matter, they are really, really good and they are coordinating with the industry as well as the uh, ministry in order to take the concerns of the industry to the ministry. So that is already happening and they are in a big way helping uh, you know, government to you know, really put forth the point of view. So that's, that's happening. I mean, that has been the significant change over the past few years and which we have noticed and we, are, we have been regularly, in fact, interacting with the Invest India people on various issues since I, I have largely worked in the retail industry, so there was a lot of, lot of uh, uh, you know, uh, discussions have happened in terms of the introduction of the FDI, single brand retail, and of late the BIS. BIS is also hanging on like a big sword on the heads of the um, uh, industries uh, which are, which are uh, in the shoe industries basically. So the interactions are happening. I mean, it is going on for last one and a half years, and still, you know, the the, the uh, gradually they are bringing in the specifications and bringing in the, the into the folds. So that is happening, and I think more consultative approach has to be adopted. As so far as this 15th, I don't think that that would be that should get extended, <laughs> and 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 such a big law impacting a, a shift from you know. Uh, exposed to uh, uh, ex ante, where uh, I mean we are conceptualizing, as I said, is Ram Raj, and we should have more laws regarding in respect of you know connected with this kind of proposition. So let's see how it works, so that tomorrow we are off the competition law. If we are so much of self-regulated regime, we are viewing and we are for foreseeing. So that's the ideal situation. Uh, any would, would any person would like to have. So thank you very much from my side. An aspect threshold which are described, this have to be seen in conjunction with the co-digital services. It's not going to be applicable to every company. If I am a manufacturing hub, I work for a conglomerate, we are not providing digital services. So I am not impacted or companies which are big conglomerate, they are not getting impacted because they have 10,000 users, etc. Unless you are in the core digital services listed in Schedule 1 of the bill, you are not getting impacted. So when we say about the investors coming in, if those investors are coming in and investing in the, uh, in the large conglomerates, be it, you know, a group like JK's or Tata, etc., I don't think this is an impact. It is only going to impact the services where the core digital services are being provided by the enterprise. So it's a self-regulated, yes, I agree. On certain aspects, they have gone on to the model of EU, where anti-regulation has been prescribed, and this is a self-regulated. If you are coming into the threshold for those core digital services, you will have to report it. If you don't report, the fines and penalties will come in. 
even they can ask for a information from you why you are not coming under the SSD category. So quantitative uh, threshold is one, as I explained in the earlier discussions. Qualitative threshold is second one, where they think your size, your uh, the number of users, end users, business users, your significant presence, etc. If those factors are being taken into consideration, you are SSD, and by uh, uh, by such criteria, if you are SSD, then you will have to follow the law. And I, I think I think uh, the lot of work has gone into this uh, enactment for two years. Committee sat across and they debated. They saw various legislations, including Australian law. Singapore law, UK laws, US laws, and then they have come out with this particular uh, bill. And of course, it will require certain modification. It will be corrected as we move on. There will be inquiries, investigations, and those inquiry investigations will be subject matter of challenge. Appeal procedure lies before the NCLAT against Supreme Court. There is a limitation period of three years from date of cause of action. All those safeguards have been built in. But I think it's a, uh, it's a welcome move, at least when we see the digital space, it's a bill. Thank you all so much. Some very, very thought-provoking uh, issues have come out today. And I hope uh, all of us are able to think uh, a little more about this, about its impact, effectiveness, and the need for the law itself. Uh, thank you all for uh, being such an amazing audience, listening to us. I, I know you all are hungry, so we'll, we'll let you move to lunch now. But thanks a lot for joining in. And thank you all to my panelists. Absolutely brilliant discussing this.